What's up guys, I'm DaggerCrafter, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Minecraft server in just a few minutes for you and your friends. There's a few important steps that we have to go through, so make sure you follow all the way through, and we'll get through this pretty quick and easy. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have Java installed. You're also going to have to make sure you have the correct version of Java installed. I'm going to provide a link down in the description for everything that I show you in this video. The first thing you're going to need to do is click on the Java download that I provide. You're going to make sure that you're on JDK 23 and it's going to default to Linux here. Just click Windows and then you'll see the 64 installer. You're going to want to download that and install Java. To ensure Java is installed, you can go to your file explorer, this PC, local disk C, and then you'll see program files, not program files 86. If it installs the program files 86, you have installed the wrong version of Java. Once you're in program files, you're going to see a Java folder and you'll see JDK 23 in here. If it's in there, you're all good to go. There's a couple more things that you'll probably need though. Although you don't have to use this program, I do highly recommend it. It's a lot better than Notepad and just makes everything look cleaner when you're editing the server files. It's called Notepad++. You're just gonna go here, um, click on the latest version download. I'm gonna provide a link again in the description and hit this little download here with the lizard gecko thing guy on the pencil. And it's gonna go ahead and download that for you. Now that we've got that out of the way, there is one more really important step you're going to have to check to see how much RAM your computer has. If you don't know how to do that, I'm going to show you in just a second. But first, go ahead and go to the Minecraft.net download for the server files. I'll provide that link in the description as well, of course. And once you get there, the page is going to look like this. You're going to see the Minecraft server 1.21.3.jar. You're going to click on that. I've already downloaded it. It's going to look like this server.jar. You're just going to hit show in folder. And here we have the Minecraft server. This was the JDK Java that we had downloaded. Once you have your Minecraft server.jar, what you want to do is right click on your file explorer, open it up, go to this PC, open up your local disk C, and in here you're going to create your new Minecraft server folder. You can name it whatever you want, I just named mine my MC server, make it simple. Open it up, and we're going to take that server.jar that we got and just drag it right into there. You can close out of your downloads tab and then what you're going to do now is you're going to right click new and create a text document. This text document you want to name run and then we're going to open it up. Now if we go back to the Minecraft server downloads website you're going to see this purple text here or pink, purple, pink, whatever it is. You're going to highlight it, pretty sure it's purple, and you're going to paste it in here. Now if we look at this I'm going to break down what it's saying real quick. It's saying that it's going to run Java with a maximum of 1 gig of RAM. If you're going to have a few friends, I would make this at least 3 gigs of RAM. You can change the 1024M to just 3G. And then the starting, XMS, you can S for starting, make it simple. Change this 1024M. You don't have to go by megabytes. You can just go straight by gigs. So you can put 1 and then a capital G. So it's saying it's starting a 1 gig server with a maximum of 3 gigs of RAM. Now I do recommend having at least 6 gigs of RAM in your PC if it's just you and a few friends. If you wanted to make a massive public server, of course you're going to need more. But for simplicity reasons, we're just saying we're having a few friends, maybe 5, 6 friends. That will be more than enough. To check your RAM, you want to right click your Windows icon and hit System. And about for your PC is going to pop up, you'll see your device name your processor, and then underneath that, you'll see your installed RAM. Now I have 48 gigs, so of course I have more than enough RAM to be able to make this Minecraft server. In your run file, what you want to do is take this Minecraft underscore and delete that. You just want it to say server.jar. The reason for that is because the name of the file we downloaded from the Minecraft website is literally just server, and it's a jar file. Next, we're going to add a new line and actually write in the word pause. This is because if there is any errors, it's going to pause the screen instead of just closing out. So you can see what the error is. And if you would like personal one-on-one -on -one help with your Minecraft server in case you do run into issues, I have created a premium Discord called the Diamond HQ. And you can find that in the description as well, and I'll help you personally. Now what we want to do is go to File, Save As, and you're going to change this to run.bat and hit Save. We can close out of this, and you can actually delete the text document. You'll have a new batch file here. We're going to get rid of the text document because we no longer need it. You're going to run that, and the first time it runs, it's going to create some files, and then it's going to stop. It says press any key to continue. That just means that it's done, and press any key to close. 
You'll see the failed to load eula.txt. You need to agree to the eula in order to run the server. So what we're going to do now is it created this new file called eula. You're going to double click on that and change the false to true. Once you've done that, just hit save and close it out. Another thing you might want to do is edit some of your server properties. So you'll see this blank server document here. This is where Notepad++ really comes in handy because opening it with normal Notepad, it looks like a jumbled mess. You're going to hit edit with Notepad++ and you'll see already that Notepad++ looks a lot more clean than regular Notepad. In here you can change some things like the difficulty, allow flight, allow nether, whatever it is you want to change. If you scroll down, you'll see where PVP is. So you can turn off PVP if you want. You'll also see down here server IP. We're going to leave that blank. If you put anything in that, it is going to make your server not work and your friends won't be able to connect. I'm going to change the message of the day, MOTD, which is the little message that shows up when people add your server. We're going to save this file and hit close. Now you will need to port forward for your friends to be able to join your Minecraft server. If you don't know how, I also have a link to one of my tutorials on how to port forward in the description. If you cannot port forward, or you simply don't want to host on your own PC because you don't have enough RAM, maybe your internet's not fast enough, whatever the reason may be, I also have a link to a Minecraft server host that I use. They're super cheap, and you can also use my discount code DECACRAFTER, and you'll get 25% off. It's very easy to set up your own server through them, and it's very quick as well. There is one more alternative to port forwarding, and it's playit.gg. This way you don't need to port forward, you don't need a server host, and it will work for up to a few friends, but every time you add someone, it might add a little bit more lag to your server. So be mindful of how many players you're going to have on your Minecraft server if you are going to go this route and you're unable to pay for a server or host yourself. Link is also going to be down in the description. Run the run.bat again after we've changed the server settings and we've agreed to the EULA. It's going to start preparing the world. And now it's literally just creating your world. So that only took a couple seconds and our world has now been created. So technically your server exists. You don't want to close out of this window though because this window is your server. If you close it, your server goes down. In here you can even type commands like help and you can see all the commands that are available. You don't use a slash when you're typing into the server console because it's only command based anyway, so there's no point. If you want to make yourself admin, you can type OP and then your name. So for me, it would be OP Decacrafter. And then you'll see that it says it made Decacrafter a server operator. Now that your server's up, the last thing you need to do is join it. So we're going to load up Minecraft. And I have loaded up the latest version, as you can see here. If Minecraft updates, don't worry. The steps for this video are going to be exactly the same, no matter which version of Minecraft it is in the future. So this video will always work. We're going to go to multiplayer. Of course, you can see I've already added the server here. We're just going to go add server. Server name, you can make it whatever you want and then server address. Since it's your server, you're just gonna put a zero. Your friends will need your IP though, so you're gonna want to figure that out. You can go to whatismyip.com and that will tell you. However, for yourself, you just put a zero, it's really that easy, and you just hit done. And then we'll see here, DECA is awesome. Subscribe to DECA Crafter, which is the message of the day that we had set up, and we can join. And now you are in your very own Minecraft server and you are opt so you can type slash help and look at all the commands that you can do. If this video helped you out at all, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, well, no.